I really like this place. I want to stay here and live. Hey everyone, we're here on a camping trip in the Minnesota Boundary Waters. Ryan's filming, this is our dad. And we're doing some, a lot of fishing, but also taking a chance to look at some birds here. The Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness is a 1,090,000 acre wilderness area in northern Minnesota's Superior National Forest. The area encompasses the forests, lakes, and streams that make up the Canada-United States border, hence the name Boundary Waters. With 1,100 lakes and hundreds of miles of rivers and streams, the Boundary Waters Wilderness is the largest uncut forest in the eastern United States. This area marks a transitional zone between boreal forest and temperate hardwood forest. For this reason, plant and animal species inhabiting both types of woods can be found in it. Preservation of this wilderness began in 1978 with the Boundary Water Canoe Area Wilderness Act and has been protected ever since. The other days we've been scouting out a lot of good places to look for birds and today we're going to try to take a more in-depth look and see if we can get some close-ups of some Minnesota species. After a short canoe paddle, we fished a shallow bay where we got some quick looks at a few species. Just from the canoe we've seen a lot of cool stuff. We had red crossbills fly over, we had some pine siskins, been kind of following a female mallard around. So hopefully we see some other cool stuff from the canoe as well. It's really nice to be able to be in these pristine areas. You can get close to the shore and there's just a lot of wildlife around. Also in the area was a water bird that we see often during migration. We have a bunch of common mergansers out to the left side of our canoe. And other than the common loon, these have been the most abundant bird species we've seen out on the water. Is a bunch of mergs? Bunch of mergs. Northern Minnesota is on the southern end of the common mergansers breeding range. The male typically abandons the nest during incubation while the female stays and cares for the chicks. Common mergansers gather in large groups as they migrate and can be found all across the northern continental United States. We left the bay and passed an area where we had seen several different species the day prior, including a belted kingfisher, song sparrow, and a very cool boreal bird. Earlier in the week, we saw a pair of gray jays over. They flew in and landed. One of them landed on the tops of these pines over here. You got one? Yep. Nice. I lost them. Ah, oh, Dad. Um, and that was a species we really wanted to see just because in Wisconsin, gray jays are really rare. In Minnesota, they're pretty common in the north. Um, but we really brief views, so hopefully we see some more. They uh, have been known to be called, like, camper's friend or camp robbers because normally they'll come into sites and like steal scraps of food and stuff but we haven't seen any around our site. With dark clouds approaching we decided to head back to camp. As soon as we returned it started to downpour and we were thankful we weren't still out on the water. Without any way of knowing how long the storm would last we threw on our rain gear and waited it out. We got back from canoeing and it just started downpouring. Glad we got in when we did. It's just not super fun to be in the rain all the time. But it looks pretty. So I thought I'd show you guys. So it rained on us for probably at least two hours and now we're back out. It's really beautiful. It's just a little windy. We heard the white-throated sparrow that's been around. We actually saw a raven fly over too, which is always cool. I appreciate a good raven. Heading up the western side of one of the islands, we heard chirping coming from the trees on shore. After closer inspection, it turned out to be one of the warbler species breeding in the north woods, the yellow-rumped warbler. Fledglings chirping and warbler calls were common as many of these species nest in northern Minnesota. In addition to the many yellow-rumped warblers, we also observed magnolia warblers and American red starts during our week in the Boundary Waters. It's cool to see these in the environment that they actually breed in, instead of just passing through like we get them in Wisconsin. Also in the vicinity was a classic Northwoods bird, the bald eagle, as well as another bird that was way more common than we thought it would be. It's a turkey vulture. There's actually been a lot of turkey vultures out here. Probably more than bald eagle. I think Minnesota should pick a new state bird, the turkey vulture. I think we go for that. No. 
With the sun starting to get low in the sky and temperatures cooling off, we got a look at the actual state bird of Minnesota before calling it a day. We're looking at a bird that most people think of when they think of Minnesota. And it's a common loon that's just right out here. The common loon is a large diving bird that resides in the northern United States and Canada during the summer and flies south to the lower states and oceanic coastlines in the fall and winter. During breeding season, common loons have a black head and neck with a white collar and black and white checkered back. In non-breeding season, they are gray-brown in color with a white underside. Common loons nest on large bodies of water with coves and islands for cover while nesting. They are an indicator of water quality as they require very clear water to find food. Their diet consists mostly of small fish, but they will also eat crustaceans, leeches, and other small aquatic creatures. While we watched this common loon, we noticed it exhibiting some interesting behavior. It would put one of its feet up in the air and wag it around. Some people believe this is one way loons cool off during hot summer days. While on the lake, we saw several loons and heard many more calling. We even encountered one particularly close loon doing its warning tremolo call as it swam away from our canoe. The common loon was adopted as the state bird of Minnesota in 1961, and we were very pleased to get close looks at such a majestic bird. A really beautiful bird has been waving its leg around. Must be kind of tiring paddling out there all day. It was a real treat to observe the common loons in their natural habitat, and it was a great end to our day. The Boundary Waters Canoe Area is one of the largest true wilderness areas left in the United States. It serves as an important refuge for wildlife, as well as a nursery for many of America's migratory bird species. While the dense forest made it difficult to view many of the bird species we saw, it was nonetheless an incredible experience to see them in a place that is still wild and unchanged. We will certainly be back again, but until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. How you doing back there, Dad? Doing great. There's a catch for fish, I'm happy. What about the birds, Dad? About the what? What about the birds? I love the birds. Look at them. Oh, that was a nice fish, guys. We're here at the boat launch on Brule Lake, and we're taking everything out. It was really cool to come up here and see birds in a remote location, especially some breeding that we don't get to see in Wisconsin. You can still hear a couple chirps uh, behind us, actually. The common loons were really awesome to see. The gray jays were a favorite of mine, as well as seeing some of those breeding warblers, like the yellow rumped and um, the magnolia as well. There were some challenges shooting from the canoe. was definitely tough. Um, you know, just dealing with the equipment around water is always difficult. But we got to see a lot of cool stuff, and I'm glad we came out here to enjoy it.